I bet you know at least one person with ADHD or you know at least one person without ADHD but they use stimulants like Adderall. But did you know that there are non-stimulant options that exist? for ADHD. And have you ever wondered if ADHD can happen to adults? And what if you're experiencing it right now? Well, let's talk about it. So if you guys know me, you know my passion is psychiatry and I was able to work in a child and adolescent psychiatry unit for a whole month with some really great psychiatrists and I got to learn a whole bunch. So I'm gonna be sharing a lot of that with you guys here today. So what is ADHD? It is basically what's happening in the brain is a neurotransmitter imbalance. This is what we call a chemical imbalance. We talked about this a little bit in my Adderall video and I will put it up there in the card so you guys can check it out. Now, we all have neurotransmitters in our brain and that's normal. They're all functioning to do a certain thing, whether it be controlling our mood or our movements, things like that. They also help control attention, which is specifically involved in ADHD. If these neurotransmitters are too high or too low, this is what we call a chemical imbalance. This is really interesting because this is how the most common psychiatric conditions are happening. It's a chemical imbalance, and in ADHD, that's what's happening as well. An example of having too low of a neurotransmitter would be serotonin in depression. And an example of one being too high would be dopamine in schizophrenia. And this is why people with schizophrenia have symptoms like hearing voices and seeing things that aren't there. And this is what really gets me going, guys, because psychiatry is basically that. It's a, it's a chemical imbalance. But different diagnoses face different stigma. Like you see someone with schizophrenia, people view them differently than people with ADHD. But it's basically the same thing going on in the brain, but it's a different neurotransmitter. So pause the video, think about that again if you have to, because it's really interesting. And I think if more people start to realize that, I think we can start changing the world slowly in the way that people view mental health. There's three main subtypes of ADHD. First being inattentive, second is hyperactive, impulsive, and the third is a combination of the two, which is the most common. To officially diagnose someone with ADHD, they need to have had six out of nine of these symptoms. And it needs to have been there for at least six months. And it needs to happen in more than one setting. And I'll get to that in a little bit, why that's important. And lastly, it needs to have happened between the ages of six to 12 years old. So what's interesting is doctors can't make the diagnosis on their own. They need information from not just the parents of the kid, but they need information from the teachers, which is really interesting because this goes back to the setting. So in order to diagnose it, if a child is just having symptoms only at home, that might be something else. And the kid should be showing signs at school, at home, and if, if that's a positive, that leads us more towards a diagnosis of ADHD. What about adult ADHD? Can it happen to adults? Well, yes, but it cannot happen for the first time in adults, no. If it is happening for the first time in adulthood, it could be something else. It could be a mood disorder, it could be a bunch of things, it could even be a lack of sleep even. So that usually warrants further investigation. But adults can have ADHD, so about two-thirds of, of kids with ADHD, they take it to adulthood. So two-thirds of them are going to keep having symptoms as an adult. Now let's talk about drugs. So there's stimulants, which we all are very familiar with, and then there are non-stimulants, which I know a lot of people don't know about. So I'd like to touch on that and uh, shed some light on that. So let me talk about stimulants first. They are prescribed more often because they work more often. They work really well, about 70 to 80% success rate. And I'm sure you've heard that it's similar to like street drugs like meth and cocaine. And yeah, it's similar. We talked about that in my Adderall video. Go check it out. But I want to reiterate here, in street drugs, it's 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 supposed to act fast that's why that's the way they take it but with drugs like these they are formulated specially so they, they release slowly over time so you never have that like the same you're never gonna get the same feeling uh, from cocaine versus Adderall and um, 
that's why it's it is safer and I just wanted to clear that up for some of you who may not know that. So non-stimulants are used usually if a stimulant has failed or if a parent requests for a non-stimulant or sometimes they're used in combination with a stimulant. So these are the most common, I'm going to put them up here and you can talk to your doctor about them uh, and have your questions answered. I'm only going to talk a little bit about each of them. So Stratera works in a different way. It works on norepinephrine instead of dopamine and it can also be used for anxiety, which is interesting. And Intiniv and Capve work by kind of acting on the overactive part of the brain and just kind of slowing it down a little bit, decreasing that overactivity. And it's important that alcohol not be consumed with these drugs. I know most of these are going to go to kids, but just putting that out there. Compared to stimulants, these drugs take longer to work. They take a few weeks and you have to take them every day. And then besides drugs, there's a very important component to treatment, which is therapy. And doctors will almost always provide or prescribe therapy along with medical treatment. What's really cool is, is this therapy can go not just for the child, but for the parents and for the teacher too. So that's pretty interesting. They usually use behavioral therapy or psychoeducation therapy. All right guys, so that's it for this video. And if you learned something new, please hit the like button. It helps me a lot. And if you haven't already, bring your awareness to the subscribe button, apply light pressure to it, and I'll see you in the next video.